military reports of UFOs take on added importance due to the threat to national security. But the military often denies they were alien spacecraft. No one's ever going to convince me I didn't see it because there were too many of us that did. War hero Thomas Mantell Jr. chased what he thought was a UFO. The Air Force disagreed, and he paid for his mistake with his life. They described the object as being a very large metallic, round metallic object. Now, eyewitnesses are speaking out about what may have really killed Mantell in the skies above Kentucky. I was a control tower operator at Stanford Field. We got a phone call from Godwin Tower. He said, we have a UFO hovering over our airport. And Mr. Kipps, this is no drill. The UFO was in the air for four hours. And it didn't move, it just stayed there. Captain Mantell was in charge of a Kentucky National Guard squadron. He was ordered to pursue the unidentified flying object. Uh, one of the pilots in the flight, Al Clements, said to him, uh, Tommy, you don't have any air. You can't do this. Uh, Mantell replied back, Al, don't worry about it. Uh, it's not a problem. They continue on up. Clements finally caught on to it himself. He described it as a large, glowing object. He said, my two wingmen are coming in. We want hot gun and we want them now. Blackwell says that Mantell sent the other planes back to get live ammo. The day of the Mantell crash, I was six years old. And my mother was taking clothes in off the line. She'd been watching a bright light in the sky. We heard a loud plane and we saw this spider plane coming in below the bright light. Got pretty close to it and all of a sudden went straight up at it. Then, flying at top speed, Mantell's plane slammed into the ground. When Captain Dusler arrived to investigate, he discovered something very peculiar. There wasn't a drop of blood any place. It was odd because there was no blood. Odd because there was no fire. I don't ever recall seeing a crash like that or as serious as that that didn't have a fire. I never saw his body because the coroner had taken it away. No one at the funeral home saw the body. It was in a black leather bag, and then it was sealed inside a lead coffin. The body was buried three days after the accident. Was there even a body in that black leather bag? No one saw the remains. Recently discovered documents revealed that the Air Force sent Colonel H.M. McCoy and his investigator, Al Ludding, to the site. Ludding had been studying what he called flying disks. He was the only man assigned to, as he called it, saucer project. He had file case after file case after file case filled with reports. One of the keys to solving this case comes from finding out more information about the Air Force intelligence team that was sent to investigate this incident. Alfred Ludding was assigned very early in the game to work on flying disks for the intelligence group. Al Ludding designed a flying disk-shaped craft, which, although he was not allowed to patent it at that time, ultimately got a patent. Where did Ludding get the idea for a flying saucer? Was it similar to the one Mantell pursued? At that time, it was general procedure that nobody talked about UFOs. The Air Force's official statement, Mantell died of anoxia, a lack of oxygen, while chasing the object. But does that cover up the real cause of Thomas Mantell's death? If we can answer these questions, if we can find out their background, then we can have a little bit more information that could answer as to whether this was an extraterrestrial vehicle.